If you have had multiple generations of pixels in your life like I have, currently rocking a Pixel 4, then you might have been a little confused, baffled, frankly pissed off when you watched the unveil of the Pixel 5 and 4a 5G, which I have here. And the reason is, uh, it looks like Google kind of completely re-strategized its vision and roadmap for the Pixel 5 um, because it's vastly different from the way they're going with the 4. So we are gonna compare what it's like compared to the 4, what it's like compared to the 4a, and everything in between. Hey, thanks for watching. Come on over with me. My little pixel, my little pixel. Ugh, here it is. Okay, this is the phone. As you can see, it's a small phone. And that's what I like about it. Probably 20% of the reason I buy a Pixel at all is because they're one of the smaller phones on the market. And I put my phone in my front pocket of my pants a lot, and I type with one hand a lot. I'm a glide typer, baby. Shing, shoo, 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 very fast. This phone is pretty small, and they never made an XL version this year, which is crazy, because almost everybody I know who has a Pixel phone has the XL. Too bad. We are a small phone company now. SIM card removal tool, some kind of fun welcome package crap you don't need. A power adapter for the wall, which iPhones don't come with anymore. <laughs> and a charging cable, USB-C to USB-C. Clips right in there. This I think is the same charger that they've always had. It's 18 watts. It's a good charger. Uh, then they've got this little uh, transferring tool thing. I've never used one and I just think they shouldn't even include this. It's just bad for the environment, Google. No, it's just junk. First thing I'm feeling is a difference in hand feel because the Pixel 4, which I'm gonna switch over here, is glass and is really slippery. First of all, I'm afraid of breaking the back. And second of all, it falls out of your pocket all the time. Whether you're sitting in the movie theater or sitting in the car, and then you go to get out of the car and it just shoots across the parking lot because the inside of your pants pocket is slippery and you don't have a D-brand skin on it. Because some of us like to run naked, David. Now, it has an aluminum body, but you might not know that because it has like kind of a sandblasted -y kind of, um, plastic feel to it. Uh, you can see a new edition on the back or an old edition that's back is the fingerprint reader. On the last generation, they eschewed the fingerprint reader and had only face unlock, which during a pandemic has been lame because I'm wearing a mask half the time and it doesn't work. So I have to just use my pattern anyway. Now we're back to the fingerprint reader. I'm not mad about that and here's why. You can technically unlock your phone faster with a fingerprint on reader than face unlock because while your phone is still in your pocket, you can reach your hand inside and put your finger right there and then on the way to your face, you've already unlocked it. So I think you can get faster unlocks with a fingerprint reader. However, you might be able to get more consistent unlock speed with the face unlock because it doesn't matter if your hands are wet, which has been kind of a problem with these in the past. Another thing you'll notice is the difference in bezels. Pretty much the same side bezel, but the new one has smaller and equally sized chin and forehead bars. So it's kind of just one consistent bezel all the way around. And that looks really nice. Uh, and then of course you can see the front camera is a punch out display as opposed to on this phone, the Pixel 4, when it first came out, it actually looked kind of um, dated. It had a bigger forehead than a lot of phones that year. Uh, and the reason for that was all this radar technology that they put into it. So they had a big thing where like, as you approached your phone, it would wake up because it could just see you coming and you could like swipe to the next song and swipe your alarm off just by moving your hand over it. That never worked. No one ever used it. And as far as the radar thing with you coming and approaching the phone, I turned it off because it drained the battery. So I'm not mad that those are gone either. The original Google devices like the 5X and the 6P, they were kind of like mid-tier devices that were really good and they were just, they were pure Android. They were simple phones. And then when the Pixels came out, they were kind of like flagships. They were trying to compete with the likes of iPhone. And I think, I think it's just a failed experiment. I think they didn't get the sales that they needed to justify what they were doing. And so now they're kind of returning to form. And what they're focusing on are things that sell phones. Similar to how when you walk into a Best Buy, you're gonna buy a 4K TV because when you're standing really close to it, it looks really good compared to a 1080p TV when you're standing three feet away. I think having a bezel-less, really big screen on the front looks fantastic when it's next to all these other phones that have bigger bezels, including iPhones. The iPhone 10 and on have huge side bezels and they still have that damn huge notch. So I think this is really gonna look like an attractive device next to even the newest iPhones. Uh, the second thing that sells phones is a great camera. And Pixels have always had a great camera. Let's check out what they got going on this time in that realm. 
right after this message from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to get your website up and running quickly. They have award-winning templates that you can use as starting points for a wide range of projects, whether you're a burger baron or a salon diva or a boring old accountant. They have e-commerce features to help you sell merch and services online and easily manage your inventory and orders. If you need support, Squarespace offers webinars as well as 24 seven customer support via live chat and email. Thank you, because I don't want to be on the phone and talk to people. I'm naked and uh, also gaming at the same time. So please, just let me chat. The new camera looks pretty similar. It has a lot of the same controls on the screen. Remember last year they unveiled these like dual exposure sliders. Those are back with a black a, a black level slider and a bright level slider. I never really found myself using those that much, even though the demo looked really cool. But the big change here is the lenses. So they both still have the 12 megapixel shooter, but now there's a new wide on this, on this new pixel. And let's just take a photo of David over there and see what the difference is. Now, one thing I noticed right away is the difference in processing time. The Pixel 4 had a dedicated like neural network AI picture processing chip. That is now gone. It's gone on either this uh, Pixel 5 and this uh, Pixel 4a 5G. Neither of them have it. That used to actually be a distinguishing feature between the 3a and the 4. They had similar camera tech, but the cheaper one didn't have that processing thing. So. It was a little bit worse at photos, but now they're all the same. They've added some cool new features into the portrait mode. I like using portrait mode, and now I like it even more because you can use night sight with it, and they give you this new thing called portrait light. So let's say you're standing in front of a sunset, which is beautiful, but all the light's behind you. So in the foreground, my face is dark. Now they have this thing called portrait light where you can actually just place a simulated light wherever you want and brighten up the uh, foreground subject. It's pretty nice. Thin bezels, great photos. Another thing that sells Google Pixel phones, great Pixel features. The reason my wife uses a Pixel phone is because of the call screening feature where if some random number you don't recognize calls you or, or one of your friends, you just hit screen call and then Google Assistant answers the phone. And when it's talking to the person, it transcribes everything on the screen. I can see what they're talking about before I decide, oh, I actually should answer this. It's just my dentist, not a telemarketer. That's awesome. And that's why my wife has the phone. What do they have this year? Oh, let me tell you, something I've wanted for years. The Google Assistant will wait on hold for you. That is awesome. It will notify you when it's your time to actually talk. That is so great and it's only here on Pixel 5s. It will trickle down in the coming months to other Pixel devices. That is a reason to buy a Pixel 5 or a Pixel phone at all. Another Pixel only feature that they have, which I think is trying to win back the hearts and minds of existing Pixel 4 owners is called Extreme Battery Saver. You get to whitelist certain apps that can go ahead and use battery while everything else gets turned off and does not run in the background. And I think I might just run my phone in that mode all the time. Just whitelist like WhatsApp and Instagram or whatever you actually use all day. And then just don't get bogged down with like fitness tracking and I don't know, Chinese made apps. And the reason I think this is really important, even though there's like three other ways to put your phone to battery saver mode, is that the Pixel 4a owners right now have been a little bit burned. Speak to Colton, he's pissed because this thing had bad battery life. It only had a 2800 milliamp hour battery and that was actually lower than the previous Pixel. But they said it was gonna be fine because of AI and crap, but it wasn't. This thing barely makes it a day. Now let's talk about the Pixel 4a 5G. I'm gonna say it right now, is not differentiated enough from this phone. These two phones have the same processor, which is a Snapdragon 765G, not a flagship processor, by the way. Uh, these phones have the exact same camera hardware. And as I said, uh, neither of them have this like specialized camera processing chip. What is the difference between these phones? One is that the five has a 90 Hertz refresh rate screen, which is nice for scrolling around. Uh, it has a metal aluminum chassis, whereas this one's just plastic. They don't, they both kind of feel plastic, but the 4A definitely feels a little cheaper. The five has wireless charging both ways, baby. You can charge it wirelessly, but you can also charge your Pixel Buds. You just put the headphone case right there and you can drain battery from the phone to the headphones, that's pretty nice. And the Pixel 5 has two gigabytes more RAM for a total of eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, do you think those admittedly kind of not that important features are worth a $200 price delta? Not to mention on the cheaper one, you get a bigger screen and a headphone jack. 
I could see a lot of people springing for this. I don't think these are that different and $200 is a pretty big difference. So I don't know, maybe in next generation, they'll sort their stuff out. But unfortunately, I find myself saying that almost every Pixel generation. So should you upgrade to one of these things? I think if you're coming from a Pixel 4, probably not. But if you have a two or a three, then it'll be a big enough jump. And you know what? I think the Pixel 5 will still really feel like a Pixel to you. I think it's only if you're coming from the four that it's like drastically different. But coming from a two or three, it'll be like, great, a brand new Pixel for 2020. And it looks modern and it has everything you need with nothing you don't. So thanks for watching Short Circuit today. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and check out our other channels. We've got like seven now. Why not? Did you even know David, that guy over there, and me have a movie podcast? A movie podcast. It's also a YouTube channel. Riley's on it. Check it out. It's great.